What's up, Trainiacs? I know what you're thinking. And the answer is yes. I am, in fact, wearing pants. This is a PG rated YouTube channel and it just so happens that I like short shorts, all right? So a couple days ago, I saw a thumbnail on YouTube and it was titled something like worst pieces of advice for something, I don't know. And it got me thinking, what is the worst advice that a lot of triathletes get? So, I started writing. And I've got what I would have to think are five of the most common things that I can just about guarantee you are gonna hear from a training partner, a coach, a magazine, a competitor YouTube channel. Not this one, we just spit good advice. But we're gonna talk about those five things that you need to be weary of listening to right after this run with my short shorts and awesome socks. Well, whoever gave me that advice, that uh, max effort, eight second hill reps at this time of year is a good idea. I do not like that advice. Overall though, that was fairly easy. Just like a 17 minute run, a little bit of high knee drill in the middle, just to reinforce really good explosive technique. And then uh, right at the end, just one eight second hard rep. It's rest week. so. Just a little bit of stimulus. All right, bad advice. So the first bit of bad advice that is kind of commonplace out there is that more training is better. In isolation, take all other factors out of the equation, more is better to a point, but you have to be able to recover to be able to accept that more training. So let's say that you're an average age grouper, you've got family, kids, friends, extracurriculars, whatever it is. That alone means that this fictional 20 to 25 hour ideal training week basically cannot apply to you. Because you are spending so much time on things other than training, that means that your training while it might be able to be fit in, it's going to be at the expense of your recovery. And the recovery required at that high amount of training is immense. As you start training more, you have to also recover more. But for us average age groupers, as we start training more, we typically recover less. In the long term, we see many, many age group athletes that end up having adrenal fatigue, overtraining syndrome, sickness, massive injury, and long term, are out of the sport. Everyone has their ideal level of training and just saying 20 to 25 hours a week is what you need to make Kona isn't correct. Now, next bit of bad training advice is giving somebody swim drills because they heard that this swim drill is a good swim drill, not because that swim drill is ideal for that person. A small amount of drilling at the start just to get comfortable in the water is good, but once you develop basic proficiency in the water, the best thing you can do for your swimming is swim. By doing a bunch of drills, you become a good driller, not a good swimmer. So be very, very cautious of when somebody says, hey, I hear this is a good drill to do without actually saying why it's a really good drill to do for you specifically. In general, there are only a very, very few amount of drills like kick for proper body alignment and balance and Hotness, as Tower 26 Jerry Rodriguez would say, is good for you. Maybe a little bit of like one arm work that is focusing on proper catch technique, but be cautious of drills. To the bike, I would say that in general, 
this isn't necessarily advice, but this might be an approach that I would say is very detrimental, is that not allowing long bike rides to be long enough or intense bike rides to be intense enough. What I mean by this is when we are trying to improve on the bike, we have to improve two things. Be able to go faster for a longer period of time. It's very hard to develop a workout that allows you to become better at both at the same time. So the approach that I would recommend doing is let those long bike rides be really long but keep the intensity very low. So in the case of training for a half Ironman, this is instead of going for a 90K ride, which we're going to do in the race, this is going for a 120, 130K ride, 140. But in that time, there's not a ton of intensity because it's going to allow you to keep pedaling for that long. So you're going to build a massive amount of efficiency and endurance. Now the opposite of that when we are trying to build speed. To build top end speed we have to build neuromuscular power and our ability to turn our body over really quickly and put a huge amount of force into the pedals. Now if we are doing that at a time that we are fairly tired from spending a lot of time on the bike, how much intensity do you think you're going to be able to put into the pedals? Not much. If you're putting a ton of intensity into the pedals, how long do you think you're going to be able to do that for? Not very long. So how we've designed the Team Trainiac workouts is that the intense workouts, the ones during the week, they might only be 30 to 40 minutes, but in that time, there's about five to eight minutes of turn yourself inside out intensity, but because it's only that amount of time, you're able to put out a huge amount of force making yourself much stronger, much faster, and then by the time you get to the race season and you put the endurance and that speed together, you are going to be very fast and you're gonna be able to hold it for a really long period of time. Let's get on to the run. And the common conception with running is that to be able to run faster, you need to run more, just as a blanket statement. And what you'll often hear from elite running coaches is that volume is the number one indicator of potential speed. And again, this is very much like the hours trained during a week in a vacuum, it's right. But these are people that are dealing with elites. Us amateurs are not necessarily able to do that. So what we have to do is if we want to train more, we have to be very, very cautious of how we do that and listen to our body. Take for example, about a month and a half ago, I started trying to train more. And even though the distance of the runs that I was doing each day were quite low, like 10 to 15 minutes, just that frequency over and over and over beat up my feet added to a back injury, start getting niggles here and there. So as we start increasing the amount of times and the amount of mileage that we run, we have to listen to our body and we will only continue to run more after listening to our body. Some hacks that we can use to get more frequency running without having that risk of injury is a little bit of water running, a little bit of strength training designed to keep our core and our posture, our structure very strong in the run to add to the running, maybe some cross country skiing, things like that, that are running ish and add to the running frequency, but don't just say miles are better if you do more, 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 more. It's not always more. And then finally, this isn't really a piece of advice, but it is, I would say on omission that historically there hasn't been a huge amount of emphasis placed on recovery, on restoration. In the book Peak Performance, what they say is the formula to get faster is that stress plus rest equals growth. Stress, your training stress, plus rest, and what they say typically is just time away from training equals growth. What I would actually say is I would switch rest for restoration. These are things like making sure you are well enough hydrated, making sure you are having a recovery shake right after your workout, making sure that you are eating well throughout the day to allow your body to rebuild itself. This is having a really good sleep schedule. This is having a rest week every three or four weeks. The entire restorative process I think is very underserved in triathlon and leads to a lot of problems for a lot of people. Sickness, injury, fatigue, 
overtraining syndrome, adrenal issues, depression, stress, plus I would say restoration, they have to be in balance. You can't just add the stress without adding the restoration. You have to find an appropriate level of each to get your best performance possible. So Trainiacs, a lot of those things that I've just mentioned were very general little tips of advice. As I was creating the Team Trainiac website, I started thinking, how can I systemize these things so that they are put in front of the athletes without them even having to think about it? They're all taken care of. They're prompted to do it without having to think about it. Well, that's a big part of what the website is based upon. So if that sounds like something you're interested in and you want to avoid all of those issues, go to triathlonterran.com forward slash team waitlist, sign up so that you know when it's available to you. And if you aren't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.